Welcome to the Mantua Garage. Today's video is part three, explaining the display features of the Syncon displays used on our Grow GHC models. We'll walk through the setup features because anytime you power the crane up, you have to confirm the crane's configuration. Even if no adjustments are needed, you still need to walk through the windows and view the settings to make sure they are set correctly for safety purposes. In the configuration menu, there are up to eight different selections that need to be verified or changed depending on the situation. Some of the older versions of software allow you to open selections that are not needed with nothing in there to select. The newest version of software will actually skip over the selections that are not needed for the model or crane that you have. Once you have all the configuration chosen, you have to set it. If it is a recognizable configuration, the load chart will be displayed. If it is unrecognizable and no chart is matching, then it will stay red with no numbers. We'll cover this later also. On the newest display versions, once you hit set, a secondary confirmation window will appear that will show you what you have chose. You hit set and continue forward. Now walking through these selections. The configuration menu will look the same on all the GHC models, the 30, the 50, 55, 75, the 130, and the 140 will all have the same selections. What is in the selections may vary depending on the model. Selection number one, the inclinometer. Choosing the slope chart or inclinometer load chart at this point has to be done. It will not change as you move the machine. If you change the position of the machine to where it changes the slope it is setting on, you manually have to go back in and change the chart you are working off of. It is not an auto feature. Selection two is for pick and carry or stationary operations. Selection three is track width. Again, it does not automatically change. You have to pre-select and pin the track width in place. There is one difference with all the models. The 75 ton does not have a fully retracted load chart to work off of. It is for transportation purposes only. All other models do. They have charts for fully retracted, mid-span, and fully extended. Selection four will be for the car body weights. This is another selection that not all models require. Selection five is counterweights. Counterweights is another one that may not be on the smaller machines, being that the 30 ton, the 50, and the 55 are considered a fixed counterweight. The 75 ton, the 130, and the 140 all have removable counterweights for shipping. Selection six is boom configurations. This is where you will choose the jib, jib nose, you, whatever options the crane may have been purchased with will be selected in this window. Selection seven will be for wench reeving number one, Selection eight will be once reaving number two, and nine is where your load chart number will actually be displayed, matching the configuration you have just chosen. There may be other options on your display depending on the model or crane that you have. On this display, there's four other items, knowing what they are can be extremely helpful. Again, these features will not be on all the models. The first one is your ballast installation. 
So anything with a removable counterweight may have this button, as shown here. When you select it, this black dash will go yellow for counterweight installation. So, for example, with the GHC-130 and the GHC-140, if the engine is running, as soon as you select this feature, the engine will shut off. You have to acknowledge the remote is on and then start the engine from the remote. And now you can use the remote to install the counterweight, remove the counterweight, raise and lower your jacks, and also extend and retract your track width on these machines. Option number two, set up attachments. If the crane is equipped with special attachments, this is a quick feature that will activate the settings for that attachment by just pressing one button. It will limit your reeving is the main purpose. So for example, if you have winch number one block reeved at five parts a line, when you select this option, the system that is on this crane will automatically limit the line pull to a max of two parts of line, assuming the jib is installed and reeved up to a single or a double line. Then the last symbol that you want to pay attention to is the lock symbol. Because if you want to change the configuration at any time, it has to be shown in the open position. If the lock is showing in the locked position, it sees weight on the hook, and the weight has to be lowered to the ground before it unlocks, which allows you to change the crane configuration safely. Now that we've walked through all the different options and the selections that need to be made, this is how you actually choose your selections and confirm your setup. You will use the scroll knob to scroll from selection to selection. You'll see a black box around each selection. Once you find one that you want to change or you need to configure, you click on the knob or press on the knob and a second window will appear. And then you use the knob Selection again three. to scroll across the adjustments that you want. Shown here is the inclinometer, where you can choose 0 0.3, 2, or 4 degree load chart. Again, whichever one you choose is what it will hold to. If you move the crane, you will have to go back in and reselect the slope. Once you push the knob, you can scroll to the next selection. Each window will have a different variation to it. Once you have chosen all of your selections, then you need to set your configuration. Your set button looks like arrows going in a circle. This will actually acknowledge that this is this, the configuration you want for this crane. As long as the load chart shows a solid green with a number in it, there is a load chart to match. If it stays red, one of the configurations is incorrect and you need to reconfigure the crane. Once the configuration is set, then you have to press the return or home button. This will take you back to the actual operator screen of the crane. The gear looking symbol will actually take you back to the configuration window if you need to change something or if something is set incorrectly. So that concludes this session. Hopefully you'll find the information very helpful. Keep in mind, there's all the detailed information in the operator's manual for all the menus and screens that I just covered. Thanks for tuning in to Manic Walk Garage. Please tune back in for future videos.